Hello and welcome to our 2021-2022 financial literacy presentation. My name is Marco Mendoza and I am the Assistant Director of Client Services in the Office of Financial Aid. And today I am joined by one of our financial aid peer advisors, a co-lead peer advisors, uh, Alexis Rodriguez. And throughout this presentation, we, we want to give you all a series of information that will better inform you on not just your financial aid award resources that are available to you all, but also some of the resources available to you on campus and some very important information that will benefit you not just this year, but throughout the rest of your academic journey here at CSUF. And so we're going to get started by giving you all an overview. Throughout this presentation, once again, we want to give you all tips on applying for financial aid, uh, why students need to be applying for financial aid, what to know after you're awarded your financial aid award package, budgeting, and also planning ahead. Your academic journey here at CSUF, we hope will be a journey filled with a lot of self-fulfillment and, and transformation and personal growth. But we also want you all to know that there are a number of things to keep in mind as you go through your journey here at CSUF and being uh, as knowledgeable as you can on your financial aid resources and your financial aid options will not just help you get through college, but help you graduate sooner and into your careers a lot faster. So first and foremost, we want to take some moment, uh, take some time, take a moment to educate you all on some of the more common financial aid terms that are used here at CSUF, and I would say at most schools as well, starting with the California Dream Act. Throughout this presentation and throughout other presentations that you might see from our office, you'll see that we use the term CDA. CDA stands for the California Dream Act application, and we'll go in, into detail on what that application is in just a few moments. And next, we have FAFSA. This is a more common term that students are familiar with. It stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And we'll go into that in just a moment as well. Next, we have cost of attendance. This stands for, this is typically referred to as COA. And this refers to the overall budget that students have when they attend here, here, they're here at CSUF, uh, depending on their status as a commuter, a student who lives on campus, or perhaps they are living off campus. And we'll show you an example of what a cost of attendance looks like for our students. Uh, next, we have EFC, expected family contribution. This is a, a number that is generated after a student inputs all of their information on either the California Dream Act application or their FAFSA application. So this is a very important number because it does help us understand what your family's financial strength is and what forms of financial aid we could potentially offer you here at CSUF. Next, we have FWS, which stands for Federal Work Study. And it's a type of grant funding that allows students to work on campus or perhaps in an in a approved off-campus location uh, while they are enrolled. So it's a great opportunity for students like Alexis here to, to gain some valuable work experience uh, and also make some money while you're still enrolled here at CSUF. Now, why should students apply? And perhaps what are the steps? Before any student can be awarded financial aid, they have to go with the first step of applying for financial aid. And so there are two applications that we use to determine that, and that is the California Dream Act, or the CDA, or the FAFSA application. Both of these applications open up on October 1st of every year. And here in the Office of Financial Aid, we actually host workshops, we actually host different outreach events, and we encourage you to attend these workshops, whether they're in an in-person capacity or in a virtual capacity, so that you can get the assistance you need to submit your application on time and if anything early, uh, the priority deadline for these applications is March 2nd. So we encourage you all to uh, submit it, submit these applications as early as you can so that you can be considered for maximum financial aid each and every year that you attend uh, Cal State Fullerton. And after you submit your application, typically in the spring semester, I would say between the months of March and April, we do request documents from students. Not every student will be asked to submit additional documentation. Uh, but if you are one of those students, we will email you to your direct student email address, as well as list these documents on your student center's to-do list. Again, not every student will be asked to, to provide additional documentation, but for those of you who are asked to provide some additional documentation, we just want to verify some of the information that you reported. Now, this could uh, mean that we require you to submit perhaps a tax, a tax document, a family household size document, uh, and so forth. So, when you do see these documents listed, you'll see those documents as PDFs that you can download and then submit into our office by mail, by fax, electronically, or by dropping them off into our Dropbox. But I would encourage you all to do the uh, online document submission through our website. It's the, the quickest and most efficient way to do it. And you'll have a priority deadline uh, every year for this upcoming uh, 
2023 California Dream Act and FAFSA application, you're going to have a priority deadline of April 29th. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, every year, the date might change slightly, but it will always be towards the end of April. And after we have obtained all of your application information, your documents, whether it's a tax document, a family household size document, if, if required, we'll then be able to, to look at all of your eligibility and award you financial aid for the upcoming academic year. And these deadlines are very important for us. So once uh, earlier I mentioned that the FAFSA and, and CD application have a March 2nd priority deadline, uh, and so do the documents. They have a priority deadline of April 29th for those of you who are, who are asked to submit additional documentation. The biggest reason is that we, when we award financial aid, there are certain types of financial aid awards that have a, a limited source of funding. And this limited source of funding has to be prioritized for students who are able to submit all of their, their requested documents and application on time. And so in order for you to be considered for all forms of financial aid, like the state university grant that can potentially pay for your tuition, we encourage you to, to please submit everything on time. Because when you're a student who doesn't submit something by the respective due date, whether it's the application or the, the documents, uh, you will be considered a priority two applicant. And at that point, we cannot guarantee that you would be considered for maximum financial aid. Now, we, we are mentioning both applications and, and even during our workshops or FAFSA and California Dream Act workshops, we go over both applications so it's both student uh, applicants can, can be as informed as possible on these applications. We want you all to know that you should only be submitting one. So this means that if you are eligible for the FAFSA application, you should only be submitting the FAFSA. And if you're only eligible for the California Dream Act, you should only be submitting the CDA application. So if you are a U.S. citizen or eligible non-citizen, if you have a valid social security number or a valid high school diploma or GED, you should be submitting the FAFSA application at studentaid.gov. And if you live in California and you meet the AB 540 eligibility requirements, and or you have a U visa or TPS status, you should be submitting the California Dream Act application. Now, if you're one of those students who might be asking yourself, what is AB 540? What are those requirements? I encourage you to visit the website listed here, dream.csac.ca.gov. It'll list all of those requirements for you, uh, and it lets you know what different things you have to meet in order to be eligible for the California Dream Act application. Now, if you are a FAFSA applicant, these are the various forms of financial aid you could potentially be eligible for, starting with the, the, the grants. Under the federal grants, we have things like the Pell Grant, Federal Work Study, as well as the TEACH Grant for any students who may be interested in a teaching credential program. Under the state forms of grants, we have things like the Cal Grant, State University Grant, the Middle Class Scholarship, and so forth that we could potentially award students. But I do want to note that for those of you who may be uh, asking yourselves, can I receive the Cal Grant, the University Grant, or the Middle Class Scholarship all at once? The answer is that we are not able to do so. Students may only receive one of these at a time, whichever one you are specifically eligible for. Now, when it comes to loans, uh, these are a, a valuable resource for, uh, resource for students because it allows you to also help meet your needs if, for example, you are not awarded enough grant funding to cover the, the tuition and fees and other expenses that you may have. So, we're able to offer students federal loans like the federal direct subsidized and the unsubsidized loans, as well as the parent plus loans. And additionally, we're also able to offer students something called alternative loans. So if you are a student who wants to see what different loan opportunities are out there with a private uh, lending institution, a credit union, you're welcome to, to take a look at those options. And if you choose to borrow loans from them, you can absolutely have those applied to your, towards your cost of attendance here at CSUF. And lastly, we encourage all students to apply for scholarships, whether it's through your student center, uh, sorry, your student portal by logging in and, and, and looking up those different scholarship opportunities at CSUF or at the CSU uh, as a whole, or also just applying for scholarship opportunities outside of the university, uh, whether they are in your local communities, local nonprofits, whatever scholarships you're awarded can always be applied towards your cost of attendance here at CSUF. Now, earlier I mentioned something called Federal Work Study. It's actually something that our uh, co-lead peer advisor, Alexis, is, is currently taking advantage of by working in the Office of Financial Aid. It's a great opportunity for any student, uh, one that I took myself when I was a, a student at, a, as an undergraduate. And it's essentially an opportunity for you, if, if offered to you in your financial aid award package, uh, to use this funding to work perhaps somewhere on campus or perhaps somewhere off campus and gain some really valuable work experience, perhaps working in the Office of Financial Aid 
or in another department, perhaps giving campus tours or as a assistant in an academic department in an academic setting. Uh, and in order for you to be awarded this, you have to meet certain eligibility criteria. But the first thing you can do in order to be awarded this is to answer yes on the application that asks you if you wanna be considered for federal work study. And next, if you have been awarded federal work study, I would encourage you to visit the Titan Connections portion of the Career Center website. This is where students can find all the different job opportunities available to students. And, and you'll be able to see all the different departments that are looking to hire student assistants for their uh, respective needs. So we encourage you to visit that site, to visit the Career Center's website, and to also uh, take advantage of the different resources that the Career Center offers. And next, we also want to take a moment to highlight the different forms of financial aid available to the California DREAM Act students. And so if you are a California DREAM Act applicant, a CDA applicant, these are the forms of financial aid you could potentially qualify for, starting with the, the grants. So under the grants, we're able to offer CDA applicants the state grant funding, like the Cal Grant, State University Grant, and the Middle Class Scholarship, among the others that are listed, as well as loans like the DREAM loan and potentially even alternative loans. And lastly, we also encourage students to once again apply for scholarships, whether they are through the CSU, CSUF, or your local uh, or outside scholarship opportunities. And for more in detail information on any of these scholarships listed, we definitely encourage you to visit our website. You'll find a lot of great information uh, about each and, and every scholarship, grant, or loan opportunity listed above. Now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Alexis. Thank you, Marco. All right, so now that you have your financial aid, what is there to know? And so we um, really want to emphasize the, the fact that here at Cal State Fullerton, that there's only one uh, disbursement each semester, and that's going to be about two weeks before the beginning of each semester. And like I know, like a lot of other community colleges, there's two, di two different uh, disbursements. Here at CSUF, there's only going to be one. And so uh, it's really important that once you have your financial aid, after it disperses and pays um, helps pay for like your tuition and fees or whatever cost costs you have for any remaining funds that are left over you really want to make that stretched out because again there's only one disbursement and so with that leftover money you uh, definitely want to help pay for any necessities kind of like your um, first tuition and campus fees after your books parking slash transportation and any other living expenses like rent or food And so for planning ahead and avoiding pitfalls, uh, ask how many years do you plan to attend CSUF? It's important to note that financial aid eligibility has a limit, so we do want you to plan ahead. So the longer a student attends school, the more it will cost them. So there's a potential to earn income is pushed back. So we definitely wanna emphasize that graduating in four years is, should be almost every student's goal if possible. Uh, we know it's a little bit tough out there, but especially planning ahead and trying to graduate in four years would definitely uh, prolong, the, or, uh, prolong the of eligibility of you have a financial aid. Um, other things to keep in mind is the longer or the longer you stay in um, enrolled in like in classes at CSUF, you might jeopardize or impact your, your eligibility of meeting the satisfactory academic progress, which is SAP, as well as um, hitting a unit cap because a lot of different aid has a certain number of units that you could reach out sort of like the state university grant that Marco emphasized or spoke about with um, about earlier, uh, students can't have more than 150 units earned in order to, to be eligible for that grant. And also for loans, for students who accept a federal direct loans or any type of loans, we, we really wanna emphasize just borrow what you need because again, it's a loan. So you're gonna have to pay that back eventually after you graduate or you fall below six units. So especially we wanna, Again, know that only uh, accept or take out of the federal direct loans are like what you need. And so Marco did uh, mention earlier the cost of attendance, um, the COA, which is basically a budget. So here on your, the screen, you see the three different budgets based, and it's basically based off of your uh, housing circumstances or the housing situation, either uh, living on campus, living off campus, or commuting slash living with parents or relatives. And so each budget, some students confuse that cost of attendance is what has to be paid for, like, like or how much tuition and fees is, which is, that's not the case. Cost of attendance, again, is just a budget to give um, each student kind of like an idea of how much they would have to pay for, um, for necessities besides just tuition and fees 
for the full academic year. So there's, you know, the cost of attendance um, of like tuition and fees, but there's also you need to create a budget of like how much books and supplies would be, uh, how much room and board, either living on campus or like living off campus, like for rent, could be like room and board. Miscellaneous is, you know, other costs that, that might come up, transportation, either for if you're commuting, um, you could use that money, budget it for gas, any oil changes, um, loan fees would be like if you accept a loan, exactly how much would be deducted from that loan. So it's just really important to this cost of attendance give you kind of an idea of how to budget your money for the academic year and really um, watch how you're saving that money that is returned back to you from financial aid. So making the cost of attendance work for you, meet the cost of attendance and graduate in four years. So again, how I mentioned earlier, um, if as CSUF and we advocate that um, graduating four years, it not only helps you graduate faster, but also um, you, if you're enrolled in 15 units every semester, you'll be able to graduate uh, sooner. So you save your financial aid and apply to scholarships and um, you could consider for federal, federal work study if eligible. So why graduate in four years? You get to not only graduate sooner, but you get to start your career sooner. And not only that, you get to start earning income sooner, start earning money as a, as a career in your, in your position. As well, I mean, we know that financial situations or financial circumstances come up that we don't plan for. Um, so there's always other help that students can reach out towards like CSUF's Tuffy's Basic Needs located in McCarthy Hall 143. There, they can answer a lot of questions for other assistance like um, temporary housing, or like food shelter, they have a lot of um, resources, resources for that, as well as the ASI food pantry located in the TSU. Um, they could, I've, I've seen, or you could also follow them on Instagram too, where they have a lot of food supplies for students who, who would need that as extra assistance. And some other important resources for financial aid wise is um, the US Department of Education uh, Education with a lot of FAFSA information. Not only does it have information on how to apply for FAFSA, but also breaks down a lot of more information on student loans, the federal Pell Grants or any basically federal aid. There's the California Student Aid Commission website for um, CDA filers or for students who have questions about like their Cal Grants or middle class scholarships, any state aid. And then there's the website for the California Dream Act students to get a little bit more information on how they can apply and different aid available for them. And then here's our information for our Office of Financial Aid. There's our phone, uh, phone number 657-278-3125. Please note our phone service hours are Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday from 8 to 5 p.m. And if you can't give us a call, we do have our uh, question platform on our website. If you just follow that link, you could go ahead and give us a message and submit a, uh, an inquiry to our office. If you have um, any extenuating circumstances or would like to speak with the counselor, feel free to go ahead and give us a call first or message to see if we could go ahead and set that up for you. And for any type of upcoming updates, we do post it either on our website and on our Instagram page where you can find it at the, um, the app below. So thank you so much for joining our very informative uh, Zoom presentation. Thank you so much, Marco, for, for breaking everything down. Yes, thank you all for, for watching and listening. We hope to see you soon and on campus. And if you need anything regarding your financial aid, please do reach out. Thank you and take care. Thank you.